Caroline, these days a lot of people are creating content, either on social media, LinkedIn, giving reviews, giving opinions, or even asking the community, I'm having this trouble, uh, what do you recommend? Or I have this thought, what's your recommendation? Mm -hmm. And I feel that uh, that's also taking a part when people are hiring job seekers. They go down on social media, they go on LinkedIn to see who this person is. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, what tips you have for people who are not used to creating content, or as you've mentioned, they've been working for 10 years and they haven't done anything, and now out of the sudden, they're in the job market and they want to find job. Because the market is also overcrowded and mm -hmm. there's so much noise, so what can they do to differentiate themselves? Because it's not, it's not just applying anymore. It's the whole package. What are you bringing to the table? What values are you bringing to the company? And what we should hire you and not the other person? Absolutely. Well, I have so much to say on this topic. So I'm going to try and keep it really short because I could probably go on for an hour. Um, my background is in marketing and in public relations. So I have a really good instinct on reading tonalities on individuals based on what I see on social media. If I go and see their Twitter account or if they have their Instagram account or if they have a LinkedIn account. Now, essentially, nobody is going to reject anybody based on uh, if somebody you know, was, was doing tequila shots on a, on a Saturday night or something like that. They, that that's not what it's about. Uh, but you're able to get a sense of what the person's, what the real person is like, and it can be very, very beneficial. Uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for demonstrating your authentic self. And I know everybody talks about the authentic self, but it's about yourself. And a lot of people will say, well, on Facebook, you only get about 1% of, of, the, of the person because they're only showing their good side. And that's true. Uh, there's, so, but you can, you can be tasteful about it, like I'm sure people are. Uh, there, uh, and some people aren't. In which case, you know that 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 can work against them. But my my recommendation is to be your authentic self. If you are hugely passionate about saving the animals, um, and uh, global warming, and the polar ice cap. Uh, melting and what you want to do about it and that is and you're passionate about that and you spend your time going to Greenpeace rallies or by by donating to Greenpeace or whatever that's that's a positive because you are taking action about something that you believe in and you are communicating something very authentically uh, so I think that is positive especially if you say to people when you're applying I am an advocate for that let's say if somebody is also uh, a huge foodie and they love making food and they, they, they love preparing. They love showing people, you know, the, the food that they've created or going to great restaurants where they're trying new, new things. Great. That's, that demonstrates what you're great at and it also demonstrates uh, or what you're interested in. And it also demonstrates, uh, it also is a great talking point when you're having conversations in an interview. It's like, well, what are you interested in? Well, I'm interested in, in food. I'm interested specifically in Spanish food. And I've been focusing on this particular area. Uh, it's a conversation point. It's an icebreaker. It's very helpful. People are able to see what lies underneath the professional uh, uh, surface of the individual. So I recommend that when we're talking about um aspects of uh your professional life and let's say you are very excited about technology that is evolving and you you follow it you uh want to learn from it and so on and so forth again acknowledging that on social media let's say linkedin or whatever is great uh and you're able to talk about that uh, if, if you're interested in how something is evolving in particular and you're genuinely interested and you've got an opinion about it uh and you may have some additional knowledge then absolutely doing blogs uh writing linkedin articles etc is uh unless you're a genuine you're a writer uh it can take a lot of time uh, my guidance, uh, and I write in my book, <laughs> in my acknowledgement sections, thank you to all the editors in my life. If I didn't have edit editors, I would have imposter syndrome, I would procrastinate like crazy and nothing would get done. So I'm, I, ha I have to acknowledge all of those uh, amazing editors in my life that, says, that say, are you sure you want to write it this way, Caroline? I say, oh, thank you so much. 
<laughs> and I write it in a different way with a yeah. different lens. And that's really, really helpful. Uh, so if you have an editor friend, if you want to write and you've got that real uh, motivation to write because you've got a lot to say to the world, you've got a lot to share, my recommendation is to find um, a, an editor. I found all of my editors on Craigslist. Uh, I just posted something for five bucks and said, I need an ed editor that has a real interest in this. At that time, I was a vegan, so I said, you know, I'm really looking for somebody that's, that also acknowledges my beliefs and mindsets about animal cruelty and um, you know, leading a, a, an organic lifestyle or whatever. I, that's what I posted at that time, and I came across, I had some fantastic applications. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So you're able to re then work with people that are like-minded, which is really satisfying because then you feel like you're working in, you're in, in collaboration and what you're writing and communicating is going to be authentic. Um, so I, that can be an expensive process. Um, if it's too much, my, my recommendation is to uh, share what you see that is really aligned with what you're talking about. Uh, then there's the tonality. The third point is the tonality. Mm. Um, too often, and you know, I have to hold myself back sometimes when I see a post that is um, vicious, cruel, mm. um, uh, that admonishes certain aspects. Uh, so I, I will hold myself back from that because I know that it, once I get caught in that, it can become a slanging match and you just can't get the tonality right. So it's, it's about, I, 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 who was it that said, uh, my mother used to it always told me n n not to say anything bad. My recommendation is to really focus on articles or podcasts or stories or n n news clippings on aspects that are going to be re that really relate and reflect on you and, uh, and and you can say i really appreciate this article uh, i encourage you to read this if you are, are interested in these particular yeah. aspects and that will enhance your in, in, in uh, cat your uh, your own brand uh, because it's what you believe in. You haven't had to invest in the writing and the, and the, and the time to be able to do that. Yeah, I would say like start very small, you know, make a point that every day you're going to like five people, comment 10 people, share articles, two yeah. articles, one in the morning, one in the afternoon and start building it little by little because it takes time. And as you mentioned, not everyone is a good writer. Not everyone has that uh, knowledge. And can start literally and I feel that on LinkedIn these days everyone is going live so you yes. can be expressing yourself <laughs> uh, and uh, you don't have to write anything you just can be live and uh, yeah. that's what you th thought you know every, yeah. everyone is different but there are certain things that you can do and that's becoming a very important part of recruitment these days. Absolutely. And I think sometimes, I think you're being ambitious with even two posts a day or two reshares a day. Sometimes it can just be one a week. You know, I think if 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 you if you go from zero to two a day, that can be quite time consuming, and then you have the decision make go through the decision making process as well, which I think is actually quite a, a painful process. Yes. So if you could aim for once a week, you know, just to start off, yeah, uh, you know, for a month, see how it goes, how it feels, how you feel, uh, how the vibe is. Yeah, just go small, and um, I, I I think the live going doing live video, I would encourage coaching. Uh, lots of coaching on that and to to become comfortable with it because we know when somebody is being like this and yeah. they're like hi let me tell you about that it feels too forced if you know you're seeing me now yeah uh, in that kind of conversation so you, you need to be is that authentic self again yeah. you know you are who you are and uh, and for people to see that uh, but as, as someone said, sometimes being yourself isn't so much of a good thing. So it's about being able to work out that fine line. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, thank you, Caroline, for sharing your insights. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other extra tips for people creating content, please leave it in the comment section. Like and share the video so that so many other people can see our comments, our uh, insights. Uh, subscribe to the channel and tune in tomorrow for another question with Caroline.